Good morning! Happy 2022! This is the first vlog of 2022. 2022 is going to be a really good year. I don't know. This feel like it could be exciting. This year our kitchen's going to be finished. In fact, this month our kitchen's going to be finished. At the moment it's half finished, but it's got no worktops. So you can kind of just see through into the, the cupboards. When I say we've got no worktops, I genuinely mean we've got no worktops. This is just like a board. This is our hob. I've been slow cooking things because we haven't got a hob. Lovely. So it's almost there, but it's not quite there. I'm going to the sim this afternoon, right? And I kind of just really want to be able to hit a really long drive today. I don't know, I've just kind of got that feeling. You know, when you just feel you want to push the boundaries. You want to go the extra mile. You want to be a little bit Bryce and DeChambeau. So I thought, what better way to try and hit a long drive than obviously just whack it into the sim, but to actually look up tips on how to hit a long drive and see if they work. They may not work, they may work, but uh, I'd be pretty impressed if they do. Why would I not go into my long drive session with the knowledge that other people, actually the pros have tried and tested and it's uh, given them extra yardages on their driver. Anyway, we're gonna see if they work or if they don't work. Some of these tips might not even work, who knows? Or it might not even work for me. It might work for you, but it might not work for me because I'm a bit odd when it comes to my swinging, I think. Sometimes just things don't really work. We're gonna have a little look online, see what tips we can come up with, see if we've got any tips from Bryson. And maybe Kyle Berkshire, he's a long drive champion, isn't he? We'll see if he's got anything else to say. And then we'll go and test them out in the sim this afternoon and see if we can add an extra few yards onto our drives. I would say I probably drive the ball on average, well, it does range, between, let's say about if I hit the ball properly, between 200 to 230 yards, I would say is my average at the moment. I mean, I've not been trying to whack it super hard recently because I kind of just want the ball to go in the air. Basically, I've been focusing a lot on my irons and whenever I focus on my irons, my driving is always really bad. When I do my driving, my irons get really bad. And I think it's all to do with like upward, downward hitting, you know, golf you think is easy, it's not. Fingers crossed something here is gonna work. Okay, I think we're gonna go into this driving session with a lot of notes on my phone because I found quite a few tips that we can use. What have I found that we're gonna test? So we've got setup changes. I've kind of gone a little bit technical here. I think I delved, I delved a little bit far into the golf world. So what I've come to learn, which is directly from Ping actually, but your driver ball speed and your angle of attack directly influence your launch angle and the spin rate of the ball. What does that even mean? Good question, because I had no idea and I was like, what is this graph even saying? So for any mathematicians out there or non-mathematicians, it does make sense that depending on like the ball flight, there will be an optimum height trajectory of the ball. Actually, this is a really good one that I've learned from Justin Rose here. He basically says, depending on how high you tee up your ball will depend on how much spin you put on the ball. So apparently if you tee up the ball higher, which means it'll hit higher up on the club face, on your driver, you will actually get less spin. Whereas if you tee it up lower, you get more spin. Who knew? I didn't know that. I now know that. What else have we learned? We've got Justin Rose says ball on the front foot. I think most of us know that. Wider stance, longer swing arc. Bryson says grip harder. Which is actually quite interesting because apparently it's like your mind. Your mind thinks if you don't grip the club hard enough, then it's gonna fall out of your hand if you swing really hard. So it only lets you swing so hard. So if you grip slightly firmer, then when you swing, your body will actually allow you to hit it further because you won't, well, it won't feel like you're gonna drop the club. That's an interesting one. Definitely we'll be trying that. So we'll, we'll try all of those setup ones. And then we've got some swing changes. Actually, this is from Tom Lewis, I asked him the other day. Um, he says it comes from the body. So we need to be swinging our body more rather than from our arms. Down swing faster. Actually, this was an interesting one Tom also said. He basically said that a lot of people who want to try and hit the ball further try and swing faster, but when they swing faster, they're actually doing their backswing faster. And so if you do your backswing really fast, then you almost have to like dead stop at the top, which then slows you down on your downswing and it's your downswing that you actually want to get faster. So interestingly, he basically said to me, you need to kind of get up there in a smooth way so that your downswing is faster rather than try and speed up your backswing and then in turn actually slows down your downswing. Bryson says straight left arm throughout the whole of the swing. 
comfortably straight. We can try that. I spoke about it a bit before. Ping. Attack angle high, low spin rate. Luckily, at the same we can do all of these numbers so we can check out those. Some of these are quite simple. I mean, the setup one's pretty simple. I think that'll be easy to implement. We can see. And then the swing changes. If I can hit over 250 yards today, in for the win. Absolutely. Bloody loving life. All I'm saying. Also, side note, something else is pretty fun. I'm gonna start a podcast. Basically, I've got a few comments on YouTube where it's like, me, you talk too much. And I know, I do talk too much sometimes. So what better way than have my own podcast where I can literally just talk. I bought this microphone over Christmas. Treat yourself, you know what I mean? And I also just felt like, to be honest, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I think that's the layout. I've got podcasts for like talking about my golf life, about just things in general, things you guys wanna talk about. Anything you send in, any questions, we could just basically like a, a fun discussion. YouTube is gonna be vlogging, day-to-day -day life, golf day-to-day -day life, golf vlogging, the fun stuff, collabs, if I do any collabs, but I get a bit nervous. I just, I'm not a very good collabber yet because I don't have like a team to film stuff. So it's always just me and I just feel like it's a bit weird to rock up being like, hey, I'm collabing with you and I've just got a little handheld camera that I use and no microphone. So yeah, I just don't think, I'm just not, good enough yet to be a collabber. I mean, you can collab with me if you feel like you wanna be like a low key chilled vibe kind of collabber. That's my cup of tea. And then Instagram's for like my golf fashion pics slash two second, three second, okay, they're more like 15 second golf tips. So little things that I'm working on with my coach that have really helped me. I think we've got it nailed this year, guys. 2022, absolutely. Nailed. Hello, it's Mia Baker here, and welcome to the very first episode of my brand new podcast called, we're calling it Unsussed. We're calling it Unsussed because my life is everything but sussed out. And I just feel like unsussed is like the perfect word for it, except I Googled it and unsussed isn't a word, but it fits perfectly for this podcast. Anyway, Unsussed will be out probably in February because I currently do not have a laptop that allows me to both edit and also edit podcasts at the same time. So once I get my new laptop, which should be very, very soon, then I'll be able to start my podcast. Until then, goodbye. <laughs> I think it's gonna be great. Okay, so I thought I was being really clever using a lapel mic, thinking I was gonna make the audio like really awesome for you guys, but turns out I actually don't know how to use a lapel mic and I've actually recorded no audio at all. So I'm just gonna be doing a little voiceover. Please forgive me. Mm, yeah, I got it wrong. Before I started my long drive session, I basically wanted to get to grips with my yardages from 0 to 100, because I always do a pitch and putt session at the end of every session. And if you watch the end of this video, you'll know exactly why it's so beneficial to do something like this. And I wanted to write it in a book rather than on my phone, because I use my phone for so many things, and it just makes sense, and it's just so much more convenient, and I would, yeah, highly recommend. The first drive I did, I kind of made a conscious effort to do the basic standard driver stuff, which is wider stance, ball off the front foot, I can't actually change my tee height in here, but I think that's something I could try maybe in future on the course. I kind of wish you could hear the ball hitting sound because I really like that sound. But anyway, I kind of hit the same distance drive as I normally would just because it's what I usually do already. This was about 197 yards. Let's just say 200. Okay, so obviously both of those tips work really well. We all know that. It's kind of, you know, the basics. But I really wanted to try the interesting ones. One that I really did want to try was the longer swing arc and straight left arm. Basically a tip from Bryson DeChambeau. I just feel like he must know something. He hits them really far. So in this swing, I thought, okay, I'm gonna keep the same tempo, but I'm gonna make my left arm as straight as possible and try and get that long swing arc. Honestly, I think this is probably the best tip of the whole day, but I've got 220 yards by doing not very much, basically just lengthening my swing up and trying to consciously keep my left arm straight throughout my swing. Next, I wanted to put a bit more welly into my swing, so I tried to consciously do what Tom said, which is generate power from my body rather than my arms. This got us about 230 yards. To be honest, I thought it was going to go further than that because I really did try hard, but... I mean, 230 is okay, and we got it a bit further, 10 yards more than the last shot. I tried to grip harder so I could hit harder. I tried to increase the speed of my downswing. I felt like I was trying so hard to get this 250 yard drive. And I just felt like I couldn't do it. And then I was thinking, you know what? I actually don't even ever practice to try and hit the ball really hard. And Carl Berkshire, who is a world long drive champion, he literally spent the end of his session hitting 50 balls as hard as he possibly can. 
and that kind of trains him over time. So that's what I did. I always had a gut feeling the lapel mic wasn't working, so I removed it. So we're back on real audio now, guys. Right, what we're gonna do is I've just refreshed all of the stats. I'm gonna hit 50, I'm gonna hit 50 tries, but I'm gonna try really, really hard to hit them really, really far. But if I don't, then I don't, but I probably won't catch it on camera because you don't have two hours to watch me swing a wall. So I'll catch up with you once I'm done. I think I underestimated how tiring hitting 50 balls really hard would be. But yeah, I've only done 27 and I'm literally sweating so much, especially when you do air shots. That takes a lot of energy out of you and I've done quite a few air shots. And then my dream came true. My 250 yard drive happened. I got 259 yards and a 230 yard carry. I hit the sweet spot on the club face. Oh my God, I felt like an absolute boss, a legend. And now I need to somehow replicate it, which is something I've not quite cracked, but I know I have the capability to do it, which is a win. Okay, we've just finished hitting 50 shots, which has kind of killed me. I'm like, that is hard work, you know. I missed a lot of those. When Carl Berkshire said spray it, I'm hoping this is what he means because my shots were all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna hit one more drive in the hope that this is gonna be like my final perfecting drive just for you guys to show you that I can hit it. Then I'll tell you what I think's helped most in terms of increasing my distance. Because I did do some good ones, but that was just hitting really hard and it's really hard to hit really hard, do you know what I mean? I actually started teeing up again because I didn't even realise that I hit over 250 yards on that one. Genuinely, how lucky was that that I actually managed to get it when I said I was going to get it for you guys? I hit a 250 three times today, which I've never done before. I've only ever hit 250 once in one session. So hitting it three times in one session, pretty big deal. Okay, so round up in terms of what I actually found most useful. Genuinely, the longer swing arc like just straightening your left arm makes such a difference to distance it's it's like something you need to do and also i felt like it was the easiest one to do i think some of the other ones as soon as i start thinking about my body and my swing speed i get a bit messy and i can't hit the ball and i have to slow it down but the left arm lengthening of the swing up really good try it let me know if it works for you because it is a really good tip that i don't think anyone has ever told me also obviously wider stance easy one to do I'm not sure about the whole tilting of the body. I don't think I've got that nailed down. I think I need like a proper coach to help me with the tilting because I think I'm doing the tilting wrong. Something's going wrong. Because every time I tilt, I hit the ball wrong. So there must be something to do with my tilting. And I just think hitting driver shots really, really hard at the end of your session for like 50 is definitely gonna be a workout because I'm aching so much right now. And I just feel like if I did that every single time, I'd find it so much easier every single time, which means I'm getting stronger, which means I could be hitting it further. If you're going to try anything next time in your rain session, try the swing arc, like keeping your left arm straight as possible throughout the whole swing. Let me know how it goes because, because I think it's changed everything for me. Okay, not everything, but like, it's a good addition. So I do like pitch and putt at the end of my sessions. I've just got my very first digital hole-in-one. No word of a lie. This is like the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me. This is the evidence I actually got a hole-in-one on pitch and putt on hole 17 on January the 4th, 2022. She's a wonder woman. Now, I just need to do it on a course. But it's my first digital hole-in-one. All I'm saying, thank you and good night.